Uh, my name is Susie K. Ashcroft. We're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I have some stories that I want out there before anything else happens. The main stories are about the reservation. I was raised on the reservation, on the Navajo reservation. You know, my grandparents were born in the 1880s. They, they were born right after the Indian Wars. So, and Grandma was Paiute and dark, and Granddad was redhead and blue-eyed. That was kind of a combination. And, um, you know, back in those days, there was lots of discrimination, so they hid out on the res, mostly. That's where they made their business, and the people treated them good. Well, the people have always treated me good. It was our home. That was where we were for generations. The Hatches and the Ashcrofts have been out there since, I don't know when. All, all the time. You know, we were just ditching around being teenagers in beautiful downtown Gallup. We were out at Church Rock. It was after 1970, I'm not sure of the date, but my friend and I were in college by then. We'd come home for break. And we were up at Church Rock. We always went up there. We wandered around. We you know, sit on a rock and watch the sunset or smoke a cigarette or do something. And we walked all the way, we got up there and we walked all the way around the church, the rock. And there's two big dips when you're walking up there. You gotta go up and then down this big old dip and then back up and then you can walk around the, the, the rock, the big rock. But there's two big rocks sitting on either side of that dip. And we were coming down the dip like we knew what we were doing and we started to cross a little spring and I could see where our footprints, you know, when you first step in water in, in, in sand, you're gonna muddy it. Well, after it washes out some, you can see footprints. Well, our footprints were there and there was a footprint that's about as big as my hand of a dog. And I saw it and it was coming after us, not before us, but after us. And I told Linda, look, and she goes, we better go. And I said, okay. You know, on reservation towns, you get all these stories and tales of, of the reservation, and most of them aren't true, but a lot of them are folklore, and we don't know for sure if they are or not. And the werewolf is one. Wherever we were, there could have been one. And um, so we just grew to accept it. Really kind of didn't believe it, but kind of did, you know, and so we were aware. And Linda and I that day were aware. And so we started taking off. We went right back around the mountain. We started going down the dip. And I realized Linda wasn't with me. And I looked back up the dip. And she's frozen solid. And about that time, I saw a brown blurb run from one rock to another. It ran just almost like us. It kind of like took the first start with a leap, because you scrunched down when I saw it to a leap when he jumped up and he took off, but then he was running just like us. And it was so quick. I bet he only took two, two, two links of legs going across there to get across. You know, I mean, he, he was a big guy, but he was brown, hairy. And I, I looked at her and her, she was just like this. And she's, she was, uh, uh, I hope I get it right. She was Sue from Oklahoma. And she knows the superstitions like I do too. And so, you know, we just knew to get the heck out of there. You don't go back up there. You don't disturb something that's kind of living in the, in the between worlds. You don't disturb them, you leave them be. After I saw him, I was out of there in a heartbeat. You know, and there's hills and things you gotta go up and down to get out of there, but I was already in car and turned it around by the time Linda got there. You know, I, would, I mean, it terrified me. I've never, ever been back up there. I don't know if he was a skinwalker. Don't talk about those. Who are they? What are they? How do they walk through the ethers? 
Why do you want to know? I don't want to know. And I don't want them hanging around me either. I don't know what they are. Are they between world things? Are they things? What are they? I don't know. The religiosity about them or, or whatever the culture you want to think about them. They're people that got stuck or they're people being used for witchcraft. Navajo witchcraft is one of the most scariest witchcrafts I've ever been around. And I've been, you know, when you're a mental health therapist, you have, you have a lot of occult experiences, if you will. And um, so I've, I've been around, but that was just way, way different. <laughs> I started setting up cameras after we had lights flickering and then scratches here and there, footsteps in the house areas. We've also picked up something on camera which looks like a, a ghost dog, wolf dog is what I call it. There's a lot of history here, a lot of strange things here. There's famous murders that took place that uh, involves some tribal magic and some curses that were flung about. And there's a strangeness in, in the mountains there. Anywhere there's tribal lands, you're gonna run into some things that you don't understand, that, that you're not meant to understand. It's, it's a cursed patch of earth, and there's a lot of Native Americans that will not go out there at all. But by the time I got closer to where I would turn off, I was at at least 75. Whatever it was, it would sometimes run like a human and then like an animal. So the creature that I had seen did seem flesh and blood to me at that point in time in life. It looked very similar to a dog man, a werewolf, skinwalker. It was like gonna eat me. Like the person that you probably bumped into, might have been a skinwalker, might have been medicine man, might have been just a regular person. And how they turn into the animals? By killing the person you love most. Who are they? What are they? How do they walk through the ethers? Why do you want to know?